he was born normal, in my opinion. Up to 12 months, he developed all these normal milestones. And then somewhere around that 12 to 15 months was when he started to regress, forgot how to wave a pipe, forgot how to blow kisses, didn't know how to say mama, baba, all those things anymore. And I guess because I believe at one stage he was normal, it's really hard to accept that he's now in a school for children with moderate to severe intellectual disabilities. So my name is Linda John. Um, I'm here with Lachlan, and the sailing son, thing. who's 12, who has moderate to severe autism. I'm here for stem cell treatment in the hope that it will repair some of the damage and hopefully help him to be more higher functioning with his autism. So I see pockets every now and again, a little glimpse of the old Lachlan, who's still so beautiful and sweet. And he doesn't really fit into that classic autism category. He is cuddly, he does have eye contact, he um, does do um, imitation um, mimicking, a lot of autistic kids don't do that. He's rather unusual for autism because he's not really one way or the other, although he is severe. He is very loving, very gentle, like a little elf, like a pixie sometimes, and uh, like a lot of autistic kids aren't loving, he's very loving. You know, he says, la, mom, big, you know, and I know he loves me. Because of his autism, he is um, very frustrated because he actually has very little speech. What can you say? Hi. Hi, mum. Mum. Hi. Mum. If any at all. He has knowledge in his head, but he finds it really hard to come out. He keeps trying to tell me something. What do you want to tell me? You tell me. To say what, what he wants it? to think. So he bites himself quite severely on the back of the hand. <laughs> How much he's bitten his hands today. Out of frustration. He um, gets very excited, so as much as he's a sweet little boy, at times when he doesn't understand situations or too much stimulation causes him to become acting as if he's like drunk or drugged and so hyper excited, hitting the television really hard, squealing, <coughs> just coming up and looking me in the eye and just squealing as loud as he can in my face. <coughs> um, tipping stuff out, thinking it's funny, bottles of water, coffee, whatever he thinks is there at the time. Um, and also the extremes of then also being very cranky, like if something, he might be in the middle of watching a DVD and all of a sudden something goes wrong, it's not the place he wanted it to be or the scene he wanted it on and all of a sudden he just loses it and starts the biting and uh, he just goes crazy. Most of his behaviour, he could go 24 hour period and of that period, 22 of those hours might be fantastic, but the hours when he's not are terrible, either extreme excitement or extreme anger. It's a a residential school for children with severe intellectual disabilities and it's run by the church and he goes on a Monday morning, comes home Friday afternoon. There's only 22 children at the school and uh, there's um, I think four children to a little hostel. They still go to school nine to three but they come home to carers in the afternoon that help him learn living skills like um, showering and uh, eating and bedtime and all those kind of brushing his teeth, important things that as a mum it's really hard for me to teach him. No, no, nobody suggested that it was going to offer a cure, only friends and only research I've done myself on the internet. Uh, no, the doctors at the hospital said that um, it's not proven and it is dangerous and that there's no way the treatment could be at any standard that it's going to help him and literally said that in a letter to me that I am risking both his life and the longevity of his life by doing something like this for him. School pretty much weren't as harsh, but still also said that, you know, it's just not proven. This is Lockie, just after he's had his first stem cell. He's had Valium and it's made him go very silly. It's like he's drunk. He's very silly. I think next time we're going to go for a lot more Valium. This is end of the first day after stem cell. 
He's been up and down all day, pretty hyper, but starting to calm down a little bit now. So hopefully it's a sign of good things to come. This is Lockie the night before his first spinal stem cell. Tomorrow he's not going to be allowed to eat for six hours before, so that's going to be hard. But he's enjoying watching these times tables. The morning of our first spinal injection, and he's got pancakes for breakfast because he has to fast today for six hours. It's not going to be easy. We're going to fill him up for breakfast, and after 9:30, no more food. Look, you're going to eat your pancakes. It's too sleepy. Okay, Loki. Oh, off we go. Okay, we've been out at the anesthetic now for about half an hour. Loki just vomited, but he seems okay. He doesn't seem to be in any pain. He's still got his um, IV in and um, he's only got a little spot there in his back where they did the IV, the spinal injection and he's got a little spot on his back as well where they took the bone marrow out. Anyway, hopefully we've got a new boy. Okay, this is Lockie, a couple of hours after. He seems to be okay, doesn't seem to be upset about anything. This is the second day after the um, spinal and Lockie's very upset today. I think he has a bad headache. Lockie. <coughs> this is what Lockie's like on the second day afterwards. He's just been wandering around all day, crying. He's had two Valium shots. <coughs> everything's wrong. He wants everything tidy and it's all upsetting him. He's acting very autistic. Very distressed. Every time he puts a DVD on, he wants to change it. I think he feels sick and he doesn't understand how to explain to us. Show me where's Saul. There. After 16 hours of crying, he's finally asleep. This is Lockie doing electrowave therapy and the um, current current electric waves are supposed to go through and help stimulate his nervous system. So what I'm showing you at the moment is Lockie's hands and you can see in other videos, footage I've got of him, he used to bite so much, only up till two weeks ago really, that um, people used to ask me What's wrong with his hands? Have they been burned? Because it looked like it had been scalded with because they were just so red and inflamed with scar tissue. Sometimes he bites so bad they were bleeding. And now, again, it was only probably a week ago that he last bit into them, but they've healed so quickly and all the tissue looks quite soft and new compared to the ugly old red scar tissue and calluses that were always there before from the biting. I guess I just thought that even five or ten percent improvement, not that you can put any percentage on improvement, but any kind of improvement could take him from what it's like to live with him on a good day compared to what it's like to live with him on a bad day. And the bad days are the days where, like I said, I say, I don't know if I can ever keep doing this. The good days are the days I think, no, I can do this, it's okay, we can cope with this. So for me, even just to get over that hurdle of being more good days and bad days would be huge. But of course, secretly inside, I really hoped and believed that it could be the missing link, the, the treatment that could take him from where we lost a lot of our skills to perhaps the stage where instead of going backwards, he's making a lot bigger steps forward and he's more teachable.